So you shut, yo, you tired, man? You look tired, brother. I'm all right, this is what we do, though. That's what you do? This is what we do. You putting in you work? Gonna, you gonna be up all night, too. I know, I actually am gonna be up all night. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Boys and Girls Club podcast. I'm your host, Blake the Brain. And I'm here with a very special guest. He's like family to me. I mean, not like family, he is family to me. Uh, and a friend, big bro, um, because any words you can use to describe that deals with the family, um, this is what this gentleman is. I'm here with Teron Brown. And if you're from the tri state area, if you've been in Delaware, tri state area, you've probably even seen some some online marketing TV. He is the man behind Thorough Threads. So I don't, I don't even want to say it's it's a, a clothing line because it's more. Am I right? Tell me what what, what is Thorough Threads? So Thorough Threads is a brand. It's a company that started off um, after college. I opened up a clothing store called Thorough Threads. Um, from there. I started screen printing and embroidery for other companies, businesses, individuals. Mm -hmm. And then it later evolved into a clothing line brand, Thorough Threads, per se. Initially, the store carried other brands. You know, I carried Rockaware, State Property, you know, right, Zor, right, Nietzsche, right, right, brands like right. that. Um, now, this time around, I just carry my own brand, Thorough Threads. And, I, and, I, and Thorough Threads is, has become... Like I said, you're family to me. So I watch you, and we watch each other grow mm -hmm. through our businesses and struggles, even, mm -hmm. you know, um, when we were kids, which we're definitely going to get into how we grew up in the Boys and Girls Club. You grew up in Riverside Projects, um, and you attended the community centers. You also, you know, grew up in Browns Boys and Girls Club. Um, I grew up in Browns. I think that's it. We're, how did you, you and my brother are best friends. But how did you guys meet, first and foremost? Oh, uh, man, we met our moms, actually. You know, they played cars every night, so... <laughs> You know, you got to drag your kids along to the car game. Right. So, you know, we keep seeing each other at these car games. You start meeting each other and talking to each other. I think we were about eight, nine years old, and we just instantly connected from there. And then from there, we basketball, baseball, and we grew up together. We had the same mentality. We both from the hood, but we're not gangsters and killers. we smart dudes, but we're not suckers. So, you know, we you know we grew with each other. Absolutely. And like I said, we're talking about growing, and you grew thorough threads. We talk, like, we've seen each other grow. Um, from when we first had our idea of our businesses, all of us. He, mm -hmm. he, my brother, he has his own business at MIH Enterprises. Shout out to MIH. Um, and when you first started to get in where you are now, and I always tell you now, you know, it feels it feels crazy though. Cause we go around the city, and I see people wearing thorough threads, mm -hmm. wearing your clothing line. Did you see it getting to this point? I didn't. I didn't. And I remember you used to say, you need some content. You need let me shoot a video for you. Let me shoot it. <laughs> and I'm like, nah, it's all right, man. Nobody went to see this stuff, man. Nobody. You know, it's yeah. cool. It, you know, Clint got a hoodie. I get you a hoodie. You know, I got a shirt. Because initially, I just like to make my stuff that I like for myself. I might have a pair of sneaks. I'm like, damn, I need a shirt. Right. I got all the equipment in the shop because I'm printing for other people. Let me make myself a shirt. And it took from there, people, oh, I like that. Where you get that from? Right. I made it. Man, how much? And oh, you want to buy this? All right. And then right. from there, just, like I said, it escalated. Now, SK, now, I don't know if you still believe me. I'm telling you, you definitely got to get out there even more. I know you're busy. But do you think this is a prime opportunity for Thorough Threads to go to the next level? And if you think so, what's the next level for Thorough Threads? I, I do think it's a prime opportunity because you got to strike while the iron's hot. Like, everybody gets a chance. Like, everybody gets a turn. It's what you do with it when it's your turn. And, you know, I don't like to, you know, talk too much about things before they occur but I'm actually looking for another location you know some people are like won't you open up um, a store over north side and I'm like that's like 10 minutes from here right right was, was, right. so I'm looking further down so I just say further down so, what's so the, I've been working on opening up another location further down so now how how far has your reach gotten to throughout the country or throughout the world like where is the yeah throughout the world um I remember one morning I just happened because when I get online orders, they come to my phone, you know, and I, I look at them a lot of times. So I looked at a, online orders from the UK. I was like, what the hell? I thought it was spam or something. Right, right, right. But then I looked, it, was a, it wasn't an email, it was an online order. It's some name I couldn't even pronounce. She ordered like two hoodies. I was like, it was $40 in shipping. I was like, all right. Did you call her? No, nah, I didn't call her. I just sent it to her like, oh, yeah, man. Because she, she finagled the bagel somehow and only paid like, Twenty dollars for shipping, so I end up eating another twenty. But I'm like, <laughs> I was looked at it like it's exposure in a whole other country. So yeah. you know, it's a win win for me. Now you got the exposure here in Delaware. Um, let's take it back to to the Boys and Girls Club days, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, um, 
growing up as kids, you know, we 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 looked up to the to the older folks, you know, Boys and Girls Club. How does it feel now that kids are wearing your stuff around the city? I mean, before we we started this interview, I came to the store. You had a little kid. His mom brought him here to get some thoroughbred stuff. Like, how does it feel to kind of be the role model for kids and in, in you know growing up in our communities where we grow up at? Like, how does that feel just from that perspective? Yeah, that that feels amazing. Like, it's, I still don't look at it as like people look at you in a different perspective than you see yourself. Always. Like, I went to go pick up my niece from school yesterday, and the fact that you know she could have had anybody pick her up, but she asked me, "Could I come pick her up?" Because you know, people in the school were wearing their out It was college day, so everybody there had an HBCU shirt. Shout out to HBCU week. Um, Shout out to Ash. Hey, Chris. Yeah, Ash and Brandon. Chris, every you no know, Clint. The whole, oh, the whole you know, crew. Yeah, yeah, the whole, yeah. whole family. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when I got there, you know, I seen, she was like, Oh, she had worse thorough thread too. And the guy was walking out with his mom, the young guy. He was like, "Oh, this is the person we're looking for." We went to um, you know, fall youth. It's a, equivalent to summer youth, but they, now they extended throughout the year, so it's for fall. And they was like, "We went down there and we signed up, and we asked could he work at your store and this and that." And, that. and I was like, "Oh, that's decent." And then somebody else appointed like, "Hey, you the thorough thread guy, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah, this is crazy." Yeah, but now I felt good. Yeah, like local celebrity, right? Yeah, something like that. Something like that. All right. Yeah. So before we get to the blow up of thorough threads, let's take it back to even. You know, growing up in the Boys and Girls Club, like we talked about, I mean, how was that experience for you? You know what I mean? Was it a safe haven? Do you look at it as, you know, how did you look at the Boys and Girls Club and how has it helped you get to, you know, just to kind of propel out of Riverside? Mm -hmm. The Boys Club was a safe haven. It was somewhere, you know, you could go to. Um, and you went you to Browns, my bad, H. Fletcher Brown. Yeah, Browns Boys Club. Used to walk there. Rain, sleet, snow, right, hell, right. everything. Um, it was a safe haven. You know, we could go there after school because, um, like you said, I'm Riverside. We didn't have a community center that had basketball courts. So, you know, we went to Brown's Boys Club. Um, and Brown's Boys Club was it was great. We would go there. You know, I would see different people. Um, we always played basketball. That's what we love. We go swimming if we wanted to and right. go upstairs, play pool. Um, you know, we wasn't worried about, you know, we weren't getting shot in there. It wasn't anything crazy happening. We, had, we felt protected by the staff there. We knew them. Um, you know, that everybody grew in the family there. Like, you know, we grew up like, oh, you going to Browns today? You going to the club today? Yeah. And, you know, it was great, man. It was just like, you know, a good situation, man. Like, I wouldn't change it for the world. Growing up in Browns was, you know, affecting me greatly, man. I really appreciate the Boys Club. And then now, you know, it's reciprocity to see how it comes back around. I'm actually printing shirts for Browns. Like, they're asking me to come back. Um, I, they had a basketball tournament there, and they asked me to present the trophy to the champion, the three-point shooter, and, and the name of Thoroughthred. So, wow, yeah, it's cool, man. Look at that. Look, we're about uh, to go back. Yeah, okay, man, it's decent, man. I put a lot of work in the Browns, man. <laughs> well, first I put a lot of work in the Browns, man. If y'all know, when he say work, that means like on the court. Yeah, he, he ain't put that much work in. You know what I mean? Put a lot of work. They didn't respect my game at first over there. They called me slow mo. <laughs> Remember that? That was my nickname at Brown, Slow Mo. I had the handle. I think it was slow, but it, man, what? <laughs> Yo, I'm laughing because I remember it was slow. Uh -huh. It wasn't slow, but you I know. think it was on the string, though. might have been slow, but it was on the string. Actually, that brings me to another point, man. You you always had incredible confidence, mm -hmm. even if the game didn't match the confidence. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, all jokes aside, I do admire that, though. Uh -huh. You know, you always had in, 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 in impeccable confidence. Did the Boys and Girls Club kind of help you with that confidence? You know, because a lot of times when we grew up and keeping it, you know, keeping it a thousand, sometimes our parents didn't know certain things mm -hmm. that could propel us to a certain level. And going to the Boys and Girls Club, I always say, it, it, if it wasn't Boys and Girls Club, I doubt if I would have turned out the way I did. You know what I mean? Just from playing basketball, but just like, you know, we had ghosts, mm -hmm. you know, who was kind of like a father figure through sports. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You had people who really cared about us. I always say Miss Jill do smart moves, you know. And, and, and it was a... It was at the time she was a, a younger white lady mm -hmm. coming to the hood, trying to help these little brown boys and girls. Not browns, but you know what I'm saying, like yeah. black boys and girls, kind of make smart moves. That's what it was. That's what the program was called. We didn't know it at the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we appreciated that love. Like, how did some of those situations kind of propel you with your confidence? And if it, if it did, I don't even know. Yeah, what Browns, you know, instilled the confidence in you that. You know, you could do anything. Like, you could come there. Whatever you did there, you know, you could do anywhere. Like, you know, it was like a it was like a cesspool of, you know, ch inner city children there. So it's like, you know, we play over here in Riverside, and you might be the best there. And then you come to Browns, and there's someone better than you. So you got to step your game up, man. Yeah. You, you know, you can't fear anybody because, you know, you looked at him. Like, I'm not picking him no more, man. He's scared. So you got yeah. to step up, man. Yeah. Even if you, you know, don't think you're ready for that. 
you gotta step up, man. You know, like they instill that confidence in you. And like people say, ghosts, uh, Paul Brown, the coaches there, later on be my high school coaches. So right. it's like, you know, we grew up together, man. And you know, they build confidence in you and they let you know, like, man, you can do this. You look, we family in here. It's not gonna be any of that. Right. Like, you know, you all right? You need a ride home? You know, they take care of you there. They take care of their own Boys and Girls Club. And like people, you, like you said, that um, were there to help you and like help you gravitate towards you, you know, gravitate towards you and help you build your journey. Like, uh, remember Mo? Yeah. Yeah, Monique. Yeah. I remember she was working there, man, like at one point. Shout out to Mo. She's doing her thing. With, still, she's yeah. still doing her thing. She's with still. The I think she's assistant principal now. She is? Yeah. I don't know. She yep. stayed doing her thing. And I remember she had her. Let tell her, by the way. Yeah, I remember she had her son, Nod, and then I speak to him. He He's starting the clothing line, so he reached out to me the other day, called Mr. Teron. I'm like, man, just call me Ron. Yeah. Mr. Teron, you got any words, advice, or anything that I can do for my clothing line? You know where I can get trademarked at? And it's like reciprocity. Like, it's reciprocity. His mom was at the boys' club, mm -hmm. and she was you know, talking to us and working there and, like, showing us stuff. And now it was him growing up, and he's asking us questions. So it's cool. No, that's what's up, man. That's how that's how it is. I always say, you know, kids look up to us, and then when you get a chance to give back, I always say always go back. Mm -hmm. We are trying to work with the Boys and Girls Club to start to stay at this program called uh, um, Come Back and Give Back. You know what I mean? That type of thing. A lot of a lot of us who grew up to the Boys and Girls Club, just coming back and just kind of give back any way you can. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, you know if you know, but I, I'm going to be using We're going to do another podcast. Um, probably sometime down at the Boys and Girls Club with the kids, an actual live audience. Okay. But you don't even know nothing about that. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm putting right. the bugs in your ear right yeah, now. I'm, you know, I'm all for it. Now, right now, Thorough Threads has become. It, would you say it is number one clothing line, and and I would say in Delaware because you got like were you like the trendsetter because now you see clothing lines popping up. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know if this is gonna cause any controversy. I don't <laughs> even know. Were were you the beginning? I wasn't the beginning. It was some people. Like, well, let's say this: I started making clothes. I started making shirts that said Thorough Threads maybe in two thousand and six, seven ish. Yeah. I didn't really take it serious. Like I said, I was making it for you know friends, family, you know close members. Um, then people started, and like I said, I do screen printing and embroidery, so I make clothes for other clothing lines. So I can't say I was before them, but um, I definitely emerged and uh, made a place. So, I mean, everybody's supposed to say they're number one. Like, you know, wouldn't yeah. you say you're the number one videographer, cameraman, Front Street is not number one in production for weddings? I, this is where I probably would disagree. I would say no. No, no. Well, I'm gonna now, say. And the reason why the reason why I say that I'm just saying from a perspective of, um, I think I know we're I, I won't say we're number one, right? But I say because you, you still have certain areas of it, right? I would say it's other photographers who are better than me. I'm like, no, they're they're really dope, right? And it's other when it comes to video, mm -hmm. I would say it ain't too many. I probably call myself the number one storyteller, and video editor, like video weddings. You know what I'm saying? I would mm -hmm. say that absolutely, but you know. Photography, I say, nah, it's other people who might be better than me from that perspective. Because I'm like, yeah, that's something like, you know what I mean? It's like knowing your game. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to say, are you the best overall, then we can debate. You know what I mean? It's like, who's the best rapper? Jay-Z. Who's the, now, but is he the best lyricist? No. But you're talking about overall, rhythm, flow, consecutive, you know, albums. He said it himself. Who's, point out somebody else better. But you can have Andre 2000, who's a better lyricist. You can mm -hmm. have anyone else who's a better lyricist. I kind of know my area. Mm -hmm. So, you know. I say I'm dope. Mm -hmm. I ain't worried about all them other people. That's what I always say too. I ain't, I ain't competing with them. Yeah, that's a good answer. I'm gonna say I'm number one in my lane. No, like, absolutely. I'm not, like you say, that's fair assessment to say. I'm not competing with anybody else. Like I say, I, you know, it's fifty fifty. Like half of my business therapy is printing for other people. Yeah. So I only put half of it into creating for myself. Now, if I put the whole hundred percent into creating for myself, my brand for other people, I'm blowing everybody out. What's stopping you, know, you from doing that then? The screen printing aspect. I'm still printing for other people, which is my bread and butter. I know. What's stopping you? So, so you feel like you will, you'll be more successful. What's one do you think you'll make? Not I'm not selling more money. What's one you think you'll be more successful from? The printing, or your actual company, Thorough Threads, the clothing line? Well, I know clothing lines come and go. They emerge on the scene. Like, and that's you can look at history. You know, Carl Kanai, Fubu. Like everybody has a turn, you get a run. You know, Fubu had a run, it's gone. They reinvented themselves. They bought Kooji. They tried again. So with the clothing line, you know they're fads. You know, 
clothing, you know, fast change. You know, mm-hmm. people wearing skinny jeans and tight shirts. Now they want oversized shirts, and you know, ch- trends and fads change. Right. The printing aspect, you know, that's always going to be there. T-shirts have been around for years. I remember when I was little, little, and I remember seeing the T-shirts with the Coca-Cola T-shirts yeah. and where's the beef T-shirt. Somebody's yeah. printed those T-shirts, and if I was around then, it would have been me. But I'm here now, so I'm printing the other T-shirts. I print shirts for Browns Boys Club. So that aspect of my business uh, hopefully never runs out. It just evolves. Technology evolves, but it's still the same pattern. You want some T-shirts made. You want some Front Street T-shirts made. You want some God is Failure is Dope mm-hmm. shirts made. You know, So that aspect, I think, that'll run longer than the clothing line. Um, that's actually a really good point. And you talked about everybody has their run. And right now it's your run. How do you plan on using that to propel or to figure out how to maximize your run? How do you do you think about that sometimes? Yeah, I think about it because, like I said, it's a run. You know, Jordan was the man, then Kobe was the man, LeBron's the man, then we got somebody else coming up soon. So it's like you have your run, it's how you capitalize off of it. And what I'm doing is, you know, just expanding myself, you know, reaching as many people as I can. Um, Hopefully I'll reach the next generation, someone who will want to then take over this or even, you know, start their own line, own line brand, company, and, you know, maybe they'll bring me in to, you know, as a, uh, they'll bring me in just to, you know, uh, help them out. Then I'll uh, be a yeah. consultant, a yeah. contractor or something. Like, and then, you know, once it's over, I can continue in the business, but, you know, from another aspect of it. So right now I'm just learning as much as I can and just, you know, retaining that information and not storing it and then using it when I need to for other things. I got you. And you talk, talk about learning as much as you can. And, I, and you know, we talk a lot mm-hmm. off, you know, I ain't gonna say like offline, mm-hmm. but we talk a lot and we talk about our struggles along the way mm-hmm. um, and how much we learned. What has been like your biggest struggle on this journey of Thorough Threads? Probably, uh, Consist- consistency with people. Um, it's hard to find good help. Like, you know, everyone, oh, I help you, I help you, but I don't want people to help me because then it's like, all right, I'm going to help you today, but I can't help you tomorrow. Yeah. I can't, I want consistent work, but um, it's hard. It's like getting consistent people who actually want to work. And you know, because you have your own businesses, um, it's your baby. So no one's going to treat it like you. No one's going to treat your lenses like you treat them. Mm-hmm. No one's going to edit like you edit. So it a lot falls on you. And, you know, as the business grows and emerges, you have more business and cut your time short. So you're trying to do all this stuff and you don't have, you know, as much time as you would need. So you're spreading yourself thin. Like, like I said, after this, I have Lincoln Homecoming, so I'm going to be up printing because of the last printer I had, you know, he was still inside so to get rid of him. So now I'm down the printer, so I got to fill in the gap. Like, customers don't want to hear, oh, your mom died or... You know, oh, you, you know, your dog is sick or whatever. They, they got a place to order. What's up? Where is that? Yeah. So, um, cons- being, it's consistency and being a people pleaser. Like I, I don't like not, I don't like not showing up for people. Like I don't like not coming through for people. Yeah. Uh, you know, somebody like it's Monday and they're like, can I get the order in? Oh, could I pick up some shirts on Friday? Knowing that my turnaround time is two weeks and I need two weeks, but. You know, if I, if you say, anyway. yeah, BC's yeah. like, yo, T. Bill, oh, man, I need, can I get 50 failure to dope uh, shirts by Friday? I got a photo shooting it. I'm like, uh, all right, BC, I got you, man. Right. Drop them off, man. I know, I know, I know the feeling. So it's like, you know, you want to. Try to look out for your people. You want to look out for your people. Yeah. You want to keep your, you know, you want to keep your business etiquette straight. And you want, you know, people to look at you as, okay, because you did that for them. So now in turn, they're going to tell someone else. And that's how business grows, man. I mean, I totally understand you when you talk about these struggles and. And, and finding good help, I know I struggled a lot, um, still do, um, with the businesses. Like you said, getting good help. Um, I know, you know, me personally, I I put that on myself. I kind of get that from like my football coach. Like if we when we was players, I never understood it. Well, I kind of did, but I really understand now. He's always, you know, we used to mess up, something would go wrong, right? He'd be like, you know what? That's not y'all. That's on me. Mm-hmm. That's on me. You know what I'm saying? At the time, we were like, nah, like we did it. The coaches, mm-hmm. nah, what it is, it's his job to prepare us to, to put the right people in place, mm-hmm. to seek out the right people. And then, like I said, that, that can be time confusing, that can be tough, and that can be hard. Which leads to my next question. I always like to ask people, what has, in your life right now, just in general, not even with the business, what has been your biggest failure that you had to overcome 
or still trying to overcome in your life? Um, and, and you know, it coincides with the question you just asked the business, me being a people pleaser, like not putting myself first and, you know, just not allotting enough time for myself, like making sure everyone else is taken care of and straight first. And then I worry about myself, like make sure all the jobs are done, make sure, you know, everyone's taken care of, everyone's fed, whatever, everyone gets where they need to go if they need a ride and, you know, everyone's taken care of and then I'll worry about myself. So you know, look up, 40 years old, and it's like, damn, a lot of things I didn't accomplish because I wanted to make sure everybody else was straight first. <laughs> like you said, I mean, 40 years old, man, life comes yeah. fast. And you, life you, comes you know, fast. You just had your second child, man. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank but you. Like, like, how much does that affect, like, you got to be home, be a family, be a father, be a dad. How much does that affect the business? Like you said, you got to, you got to, you doing this. Like, do you look at that now, like, do I need to be home? Do I? How do I figure this out? Like, how do you handle that? And see, that's kind of you know, that's kind of tricky because like you want to be there for them. You don't want to miss certain things in life. You want to see them when they start crawling and start talking. You don't want to miss those, you know, those first. But also in turn, you got to think like, all right. So if I don't work and I don't you know build this business that hopefully they could take over, um, you know, where are they going to walk and crawl at? Because it's not going to be a house. Yeah. It's like going to pay for the bills. Right, so right, it's right. like. They probably don't understand now, but later on they understand like, oh, you know, I might not have been around for everything because I was building this future for you. Like, do you feel, do you feel like, I, I, I ask myself those questions, because I always say in life, like, something has to get sacrificed, period. Mm -hmm. For you to eat, something had to get sacrificed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, do you look at certain things, like now being a father, like, how do you look at sacrificing that time? Like you said, I might miss that time because I want to provide them with a, a home. How do you feel about those sacrifices that you make? And does does it? Do you, like how do you think about it? Does, like basically, what I'm trying to say is like, what do you do with those emotions? Because you, you know, black men, we were talking about you know, I mean, mental health, and sometimes we don't talk to each other about those type mm -hmm. of things. But how do you handle it with yourself? Like, what do you think? I don't, we, did we get too deep? Did we get too deep, bro? Nah, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a thorough interview. It's a thorough yeah. interview. We right on Front Street with this. Right. Like, like, I did that. Like, you did that right <laughs> there. Yeah. Like I told you, back with confidence, man. Do me the oop and I windmilled it. <laughs> you Come can't on, really duck that. No, I duck, can't. Duck. I, I probably ducked maybe four or five times in my life. Man. Listen, I ducked one time. It yeah. was off a oop. But it's different. I'm 6'2", you like 5'8". Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a difference, man. I can shoot that. You should have definitely ducked. I was more of a shooter, man. My game was more finesse. You know, two is a two is a two. Dunk will lay up. Two is a two is a two, man. You know, <laughs> slow mo, Weird slow mo. Me. But yeah, um, that 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 the question is, I, we I forgot. But the question, the sacrifice is, you know, I've been just to win, but I'm not going to break. Meaning that, you know, I miss a couple things here and there. I'm not, I won't miss any big mon monumental events like absolutely. like as they get older. I'm not going to miss graduations and mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, games and stuff like that. Like I'm doing this now. This might go too, there you go. Yeah, pause. I miss some things. I miss a few things, man. But like right now, like they're not gonna remember that. But even with that, I'm like, you know, s slowly transitioning into, you know, not spending as much time in the business, like cutting it off. Like, you know what? I'll do this tomorrow. Like, whereas though before, I would try to fit in as much as I could in the day. Like, I'd try to, you know, overextend myself and just like, cause it was just me before. I'm like, I could do this. I could stay up for three days straight. Like, now I gotta think about my health because I got, you know, people depending on me. So, you know, I, I like, you know what? I'm gonna stop early tonight. I'll pick this back up tomorrow. So yeah, that's the sacrifice that, you know, I'm, I'm still sacrificing, but not as much. Right. And you gotta pick and choose, like, uh, what's gonna be more beneficial here? Uh, printing this job, getting this job done for this organization two days early, or, you know, seeing my kids and, you know, building that bond with them, so. All right, listen, there it is, man. We're talking about sacrifices. Uh, we talked about a lot of stuff, man. Uh, we, we was being very thorough. I know you got to go, man. I know you got to get ready for Lincoln's homecoming. I ain't even touch on that. First of all, he's a graduate. Uh, you're a graduate of Lincoln University, class of 03 and 16. Big gap. <laughs> Big gap. Yeah, oh, you, got, you got your master's? Yeah, I went and got my master's. Yeah. Oh, I know you won't get. I think you did. I do remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. You won't get your master's. Yeah, it was real quick. I did a celebrate program like 18 months. So what made you go back and get like you have your you have your own business you have the clothing line? I was about to end the interview, but I'm gonna keep going. Like, you you know you had your business, you got your business. You don't need your masters for your business. But what made you go back and get your masters? Because I you know 
like you said, you had mentioned something real brief just now about black fathers. And, you know, I like I said, we grew up, you know where we grew up at. And, you know, we grew up single mothers, similar situations. Uh, so, like you said earlier, our parents don't know everything. So it was for us to run this generation to take the baton and run with it and just, mm -hmm. you know, keep running with it. I got my degree in human services. Um, first thing I did, uh, I did an internship at Ferris, and I was in there, and I was like, damn, I know these young boys. They two, three years younger than me. Right. And from there, I always wanted to help, like inner city, inner city youth. That was my passion, man, like community outreach work. Anything I could do, I'm even from, you know, working with kids that's um in incarcerated to some young kids that are um, truancy court um to coaching like that was just my passion I wanted to work with so anyway i was working you know working the program director of a program um you know sometimes you get credentials got to match you know the experience so i was running the program um where i was getting adjud adjudicated kids out of out of Ferris early yeah. and I would find, you know, transition them back in the community. But, you know, I, I wanted, I thought that's something I wanted to do. I want to open up a program on my own and I needed the credentials to do that. So, you know, I went and got my master's. There you go, man. Listen, man, get credentials. This has been uh, a, a, a great interview with Teron Brown, um, the man behind Thorough Threads. Uh, how can people reach you? What can they do? How, like, you know what I mean? Easily accessible, man. Uh, Instagram is at ThoroughThreads. Uh, website, ThoroughThreads.com. Store address, 505 North Lincoln Street, Wilmington, Delaware, 19805. Well, there you have it, man. Thorough Threads with my man, Teron Brown. I'm Blake the Brain. We appreciate you guys tuning in to the Boys and Girls Club of Delaware podcast. We'll see you next time.